Yeah. Off the spinal cord. I still need to finish my last. I finished today. I get called here. Dude, Hawkins is so confusing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
It's a what? It's just a sign up thing. It's a, it's a Google form. And we'll have you pencil, paper, copy, give you a timer, run it just like the real test. You'll be able to check your score, see how you did. And it's from a previous year, an international version of the test, which is not any different for y'all. Uh, so you could see like where you actually scored that year in the range. So gives you real feedback. So yes. Did you take AP calculus? I did not, no. I did not even try to take calculus until college. I was in no hurry. Did you pre -cal? I did, but it was called trig analysis when I took it. Slightly different. Okay. All right, so let's go over these notes. So um, before I get you onto the circuit here, I'd like to review the washer and disk method with questions one through four. And then there is one type of question that you need to be able to do with these that are going to show up in the circuit that I did not show you before break. So we will see that in five and six. So go ahead and get yourself focused, please, and follow along with me. So one and two are just a quick review of what the disk method is, how it works, and why it works that way. So we've got a bunch of lines. Let's go ahead and sketch them. And it should trap in an area that we're going to call R. Okay, and in question one, we're going to rotate around the x-axis. And in question two, exact same equations, we're going to rotate around the y-axis. Okay, so when, for question one, if we want to rotate it around the x-axis, what needs to be true about our integration? It's true of x. Okay, with respect to x. What about the limits of integration? How do we find those? Zero to five. We're looking at x values because it's dx. And then when we did this, when we take these points and we rotate them around, we ended up trying to find an infinite number of circles. And because it's a bunch of circles, we did pi r squared. Don't forget the pi. And so what is the radius uh, rotating it around the x-axis? Three. 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 My picture is just not the best. OK, and we'll go ahead and actually integrate this, because integrating 9 would just be 9x plug in 0, plug in 5, we get 45 pi. So that is what is called the disk method. It's a bunch of circles. There's no gap in area, so there's no gap in volume, just regular old disk method. All right, for y-axis, we spin it this way instead. One thing that was different is that it should be dy. Because it's dy, we should be looking at y values, so 0 to 3. It's still going to be an infinite number of circles, so pi r squared. But your r is probably going to be different if you spin it around this axis. So whether I draw in this one or draw in this one, it looks like the radius is always this length, which is five. So to integrate 25 would be 25x. So 75 pi would be the volume. Okay, then to quickly review the washer method, um, let's go ahead and graph number three. Now, just so you guys know, the AP exam won't ever say, is this washer method or disk method? You don't have to specify which you think it is, but it is kind of helpful because we set them up differently. So I already gave away that this is going to be a washer method, but what makes this a washer method, whereas one and two were a disk method? It has 
to subtract the value. Why do you need to subtract the volume of the other one, though? Because otherwise, you're just doing like R is the whole thing if it was from zero to three. But really, you're finding the volume of zero to two. You're subtracting that volume from the volume of zero to three. Okay, if I was rotating this around the y axis, would it be disk or washer? Disk. Because you see how the area is hugged up against the thing you're spinning it around? Yep. Whereas if I'm spinning this around the x axis, this gap in area is going to create a gap in volume. So the only difference between disk and washer is it's not just pi r squared, it's big R minus little r. But x axis is still going to be dx. dx still means you should be looking at x values. Do I need to tell you to put that up? Um, the hardest part of these questions, the part that you really need to slow down on, because you're going to end up taking, spending more time if you rush this, but the radius links. So taking a point on the outside and trying to spin it, and a couple of them help you see that the radius is always the same value in this question, and that length is always going to be this, 3. You guys see that okay? My picture gets too busy, so I need to put that away. Okay, and then if you spin it around, the inside part that's missing, that would be uh, the part of the volume we want to take away. Looks like he always has a volume or a radius of one. So big R squared minus small r squared, and then pi because it's uh, circles. You can set this up as two integrations, or you can just combine them into one. Most people just do one. So we get 8x from 0 to 5, so 40 pi. There's a gap in area next to the thing we're spinning in around, which creates a gap in volume three-dimensionally. So we have to remove that volume away from our final answer. That's why we subtract this part. Okay. One more, and then I'll show you the only other thing you need to be worried about with these question types that didn't come up before break. Okay, unfortunately we can't use the same picture here. I needed a different picture. So, you guys can see I'm trying to keep the equations and stuff very simple. If we are going to spin this area around the y-axis, there's a gap in area next to the y-axis, which is how I know this is a washer type question instead of a, a disk type question. So it's going to have a big R squared, and then I need to take away the small r squared. Because this is spun around the y-axis, dy, we should be looking at y values for the limits of integration, 0 to 3. And what do you think the big radius is going to be? Okay. Take outside point, try to draw in a couple of these. So you can see it looks like they're always the same size of 5. And then the small circle looks like they're always the same as well. That's a radius of what? So 25 minus 4 is 21. Integrate 21, you get 21x. So 63 pi. Yes? So when you're doing the disk method, uh, just like visually for me, when you're going around the big. Um, the disk method? Yes. Okay. When you just did like the big radius, the 5. I envisioned the. Uh, the, the one we just did? That's washer. Sorry, I did washer. Not okay, washer. Um, the radius of that washer, isn't it? I don't know, I guess it's just strange because there's a big gap in it. Here's it's still considered the radius, even though you're missing that quantity, right? Well, it's still part of the radius, Yeah. even though it's not like part of the graph. So these red represent the big circles. Mm -hmm. They're part of the big ones because they're coming from the outside of the area. So this length is 5. That's why we said the radius of the big circles was 5. And then the smaller circles made up these purple ones. 
these both had a radius of two. Okay. So, and then if you draw both at the same time, you can see why they're called washers, right? The small circle within the big circle. So, did that answer your question, though? Yes. Okay. Okay. So there was one thing that I didn't really tell you before break, and that comes up in question five and six. In fact, I think you'll probably guess what's going to happen when you see it. But well, let's just jump into it and see if uh, you're going to guess correctly. So, new region. get the same area of course now if I was to spin this around the x-axis is this going to be disk or washer okay if I spin around the y-axis is it going to be disk or washer okay you said disk both times but what I didn't make you worry about before spring break is we don't always spin it around the x-axis or the y-axis. It can be around a different line, like the line y equals negative 1. So, can you see that this is going to be washer now? Okay. Um, so, one thing that, again, I think most of you would guess this correctly, but I need to make sure that you would get it. It's not as obvious whether this is dx or dy anymore. But when we rotate it around the x-axis, it was dx, and we rotate it around the y-axis, it was dy. What do you think this one's going to be? Dx. Okay, how do you know that? Right, they're both horizontal lines. So it's not really that you do dx because it's x-axis. You do dx because x-axis is a horizontal line. So anytime it's a horizontal line, it's dx, and you're going to use x values for your limit of integration. Otherwise, it's basically the same. Pi r squared. We're going to have the big ones that come from the outside of the area. Those look to always be two. radius of 2. I would say that these might be a touch harder because it's usually a little bit easier to count to the x-axis or the y-axis for the radius. Now you're counting to y equals negative 1. And then the small ones are going to be like this. So the small radius is correct. So in the end, we get 3x from 0 to 6 times pi, so 18 pi. Okay, and then if you understand why we did 0 to 6 in dx there, because it was a horizontal line, then number 6 is the only other situation that could happen, which would be rotating it around a vertical line. X. So even though this area in question 6 is hugged up, all the way next to the x-axis and y-axis, which would normally make this a disk method type question. We are going to actually rotate this one around y equal or x equals seven, which is way out here. So, because you're rotating around a vertical line, it's not just the y-axis, but all vertical lines would be dy. Because it's dy, you should be looking at y values for your limit of integration because there's this gap in area here means that it's a washer type instead of a disk type so we need a radius squared minus a small radius squared and as I said the counting measuring those radius links can be just a tiny bit harder so even on the other normal ones I said that's where you need to slow down so, rotating this around here, take the outside point. Looks like that length is always going to be 5, 7. And rotating it around the inside part, 
would be what? Two. So 49 minus 4 would be 45. 45 integrates is 45x, or I guess y in our case. Now, this is not going to be an issue today, and I may have said this last time, but it has been about almost two weeks. On an FRQ, these, these question types are very common for FRQs, by the way. What do you think the most common mistake is in this type of work? Forgetting the pi. Forgetting pi. A lot of times students get so wrapped up in this, and they do this correctly, but you forget the pi. But remember, it's a bunch of circles, so don't forget that. Okay, so 5 and 6 is, well, 1 through 4 was just a quick little reminder of what we did before the break, and then 5 and 6 was showing you if it was rotated around any horizontal or any vertical line, not just the x or y axis. So the next thing I need you to transition into is um, the circuit, and on this one, I do want you to, there are some of these you need to integrate by hand. I've been letting you do a lot of integration just in the calculator but if it doesn't state it means that you need to integrate by hand number one the integration on this is just about the same as the integration as the notes we just did very very straightforward on a question try not to give the answer away there when it does this when it's got two asterisks that means the integral is going to be a pain to solve by hand, so feel free to use a calculator on those. In fact, please do, because I don't want you to waste too much time. So if there's two asterisks, use a calculator on the integration. If there's no asterisks, you need to practice the integrating by hand, because it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, one or two of them are a little bit harder, but I haven't forced y'all to practice that in a while. So let me let you get a 10, 15 minute head start and then I'll come around and start to help out with any of the first few that might be giving you issues. And this is probably going to be the last class period where we spend talking about these question types. So you really want to feel as good as you can with these by the end of class. So then hopefully you don't have to review this before your last test and hopefully you don't feel like you have to review it before the AP exam either. But we got other stuff to review so we got to kind of finish it up on that today. There are two assignments I'm going to ask you to turn in next class or sooner through Google Classroom but I'll talk about all that at the end of class. I guess it's also on the agenda if you finish early. Oh, I think one thing I didn't say about the mock exam though, maybe I did, I don't remember. Um, we will go over some parts of the mock exam in class as part of our AP review. So if you did take the mock exam, you already know up front whether you got a question right or not, which is kind of a benefit. Um, I don't know. I guess that's all I was going to say.
Sooner the better. I don't know. Ms. Cross is in charge of it. As far as making copies, it's not too big of a deal if we found out a few days before. But getting money, like we have to get money from the school to buy food, so then that's a little bit of a process. So sooner the better. <laughs> On Google Classroom, it has a Google form, but there's a link to it. <laughs> if you think you can or you're going to try your best, just say yes. And if you don't show up, there's no problem. I feel bad for people who are Wait, is the marketing like the lecture room to ask me to see the cafeteria? Uh, well, part of it is we have to see how many people are going to show up. So we did mock exam for AB students and BC students, but I have two classes and the Cross has two classes and she has two or three classes of these students. So if 20 students sign up total, we'll just probably do it all at once. If 60 students show up, we'll probably use two classrooms. She'll be one of them. If 100 students sign up, then yeah, we might have to do it. That's, that's kind of why we need to know what's going on in the future. Again, if you have something you want me to look at or give some feedback on, just call me over as I come around. Working number two should look a little messy, but then any analytics should come out, it should not even be a fraction. So. 
We have to keep it because it's a secured exam, but you will have access to it during advisory or and in here during class. So. One, but also, like, it's also on Google Classroom, so like they don't have it where you can print it off. You can get outside of class. Oh, so, uh, like maybe in class you might mark down like, hey, I missed it. These 20 multiple choice questions, and then at home they pull the same questions up on you in the classroom. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know. I feel like you could just take a picture of them with your phone on the computer, so I don't know what you want to really consider yeah. 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 This yeah. very yeah. protective. Yeah. Is that the A plus board? I included two. That's, uh, that's College Board. Uh, yeah. Can you tell me the question? It is? How is it six? Four. Eight eight three is plus four. Uh, Okay, I know it's kind of early, but is there 
maybe question one, two, three, or four that you've tried and you know you're stuck on and want some help, I could do it on the board to help everybody. Number two. Same area as me. I got it. Okay. Um, <coughs> rotate around the x axis. So dx 0 to 2. Okay with that? Okay. This looks like just a disk because there's not missing area there. So pi r squared. So r could be as small as this or this or as big as that. And all of those have what in common? Right. And you want to call it this instead of y because this is dx. Now, uh, someone was going to use u substitution for this, and I think that that would probably work on this question, but the far majority of people are going to square this. So if you multiply this by itself, two times, you're going to get a 9 fourths x squared. You're going to get minus 9 halves x, minus 9 halves x, which would be negative 18 halves x, which is negative 9. And then the last part of FOIL would be plus 9. Yeah, you probably just squared this one and squared this one, and you got to actually FOIL it out. You're missing the outer and inner part of FOIL when you do that. Okay. Anybody need me to finish number two on the board that I started? Okay, I'll leave it up for a bit.
It is possible. You just take two thirds, maybe two thirds of the inside. So you need to put the inside. Yeah. So the further away, the other three. So that's our biggest. And then our little one. Sixty times six. Ninety six changes. But we can't put it as that because we cannot. Ninety six. Did you go the same answer? I'm almost. 128 over 5. 
For number six? Oh, no, eight. I, I got eight five. For you six. Got what? Yeah. The answer for six? Yeah. Mr. Townsend, can you come here for a second? Mm -hmm. we, we made new some food here. Mm -hmm. You want eight? Mm -hmm. So for this one, we got two times five. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. so. And I'm more confident about the other one. Already done five. Oh, oh. What other one? Oh, yeah. Five. Exactly. The same exact thing. Uh, yeah, it's just like four five. Yeah, that's number three. But it should be different. Yeah. So. Okay, I agree with this one. Oh, but I think this is number 13. Oh, which is number 13? That was number 13. Yeah, so what's your number two? Do you think uh, this one? Yeah, so you end up with that on that. Uh, four five. Four five. Yes. I got six five. You got. Who's six five answer? Oh my god. When you integrated it, did you get. One half x cubed. Okay, minus that's the negative number, folks. Unless that is. I don't remember anything. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, now we've got the number. Eighty-eight. Exactly. It's seven. What if you did x times x to the x squared? Why didn't you do negative three half times negative three half? Okay. So. Oh my god. Oh, that's not right. Yeah. Wait, wait. Oh, okay, I know what, I, I messed up this part. Okay. I should have put nine. Thank you. What were you doing? I didn't see six points. I didn't see six points. I didn't see six points. Is this what you do? We have to count because it's symmetrical. You can put the two out there. Okay, let's back to the last two. I don't have that. Yeah, so this is. Oh, also. So you're subtracting the so this I want you to from the y equals four. What is your thing? So this was five. Yeah. Oh, you're subtracting. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 What, what did you do? Look, oh, it's uh, like uh, so that should be the code. Oh, no, oh, oh, it's only oh, easier because it's like that would be a Okay, six. Oh, it's bounded by y x x to the four. X axis and the line X is two. So it's only yeah. 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 It's not that four. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, I guess I'm I still have the same one four. Yeah, even if you subtract the number, it looks like you raise the number. Like this is really like That's how you get two to two. Okay. So I and then pick up the name. So I can help you with the last one. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you're this was 885. No, no, that was this one was getting my negative numbers. Oh, okay. This is the last one's gonna be a little bit harder. Oh, it's like it's like it kind of makes more nice to do so. Yes. You can make since this is symmetrical, you can put the two out there, right? Well, the area is also bounded by the y axis. So you either get that area or you get that area. Yeah. But the y axis is supposed to trap half of your area. Yeah, so you can't do that, right? Because it, it, instead of doing from negative 2 to 2, you can do it. It shouldn't be. Negative 2 to 2 doesn't have your area bounded by the y axis. You're ignoring the y axis. You either need to get that area to the right or the area to the left. So since it's the same area, you're going to put the same. Thing. Oh, it only wants. It doesn't work. How do you get that? Little Part of your area is trapped by the y axis. That's why it's the most only problem is that you have this. Number five, that's an on question. That's kind of weird. So but if the so it was asking you, you would do that, right? So it was asking you for the whole area. Well, I mean, but like, how do you take the group? It tries, like, not value by the. Because then you just subtract that. You see a few areas. So if you have negative two to two and integrating the whole thing, you can do zero to two and double it. Yeah. Only because it's exactly the same. What does it say it's bounded by the y axis or x axis? Oh, wait. Okay. 
Okay, I've gotten like four or five questions in a row about question number eight. So, if you are not to question eight,
If you are not the question eight, you might jump ahead since a lot of other people are having the same issue. But number eight is this one. So there seems to be part of number eight that's not too much of an issue for people. Um, it seems like finding the area region is going okay. It would be that. But because this one is being rotated around y equals four, which is up here. So that's a horizontal line, so dx which means we should be going from 0 to 2. Seems like people are mostly okay with that as well. But next to the line that we're rotating it around, some of the area doesn't touch it, some of the area does touch it, which is how I know it's going to be a washer setup instead of a, a disc setup. Okay, the outer, the big radius seems to be going better for people than other ones. So you need to take an outside point, try to rotate it, take an outside point, try to rotate it. It looks like the outside radius is always what? Four. Correct, I think that's always four. You guys okay with that? For those of you that haven't gotten to this one yet. But the inside radius, and then this is where I can't emphasize the picture enough. Right here, the radius should be zero. Over here, the inside radius should be four and in the middle something different. So it's almost like you got to come up with a formula that no matter what x value you plug in, it gives you the correct radius length. So somebody give me an incorrect uh, small radius length and we'll talk about how we know. Okay, so x squared is a common one. So if you think the small radius is x squared, what you can do to test it is just plug in a couple. When x is zero, you would be saying that the small radius is zero. But when x is zero, the small radius is supposed to be four. So that can't, that can't be correct. So that doesn't help you get the answer, but it does help you know that you can't do this. So what else could we try besides the right answer? X. Okay, if we did x, then when x is zero, the small radius would be zero. The small radius is supposed to be four. So it can't be x. Okay, here's how you guys need to think of this one. Okay, for all of these, all of these small radiuses, do you see how they all have a radius of, they're all trying to come down this far to four? But then they're being some of them are being limited by this line. And what is this line? So at most it's four, but it gets less and less and less and less, less is in subtract as x squared gets bigger. And then you can test it out a little bit. When x is zero, this would give you a small radius of four, which makes sense with the picture. When x is 2, the small radius would be 0, which makes sense in terms of the picture. And of course, you can do more tests than that if you need to. But it's not always just to the function. Sometimes it could be a number, subtract where the function is. So that's not um, always easy to see. But that would be your small radius in question 8. You just got to kind of guess and check when you're creating a formula like um, that? I mean, yeah, educated guess for sure. You don't want to try blindly, but okay. you should know that there has to be a variable in it for sure because it changes, so that helps. Okay. If you had in the in the line x equals two, um, I just blocked that. Oh wait, hold on. Do my do my suit this and just give me the proper one. Yeah. 
Okay, if you had something more detailed about eight, feel free to. Mr. Tyson, I can follow along with his answer that mine's the same, but do you know what can be preventing my calculator from giving me a fraction? Uh, the algorithm that it uses to produce the answer, it's got a little bit of rounding error. Okay. Was so, it, did yours not have a rounding error? No, mine had like, I just, I, I just quoted like the original function of that. Oh, but isn't that one not a calculator one? It is. Oh, it is a calculator one? Wait. Number six? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought most of the calculator ones, or non-calculator ones would work out this way. So, oh, so I don't know why. So there you have it. <laughs> it's really just kind of two errors, and then change it to an improper fraction. So you look at the pie, ten to two thirds, because that's what thirty-two thirds. But sometimes when your calculator does this, you get like the last couple decimals are off, and you try to do math and then to change it to a fraction, it doesn't know what to do with it because it's too far off. But that on this assignment at least it means that it's one they want you to do by hand. Oh, is this one? Well, not this one, but I'm just saying it's It shouldn't be an issue. setting it up correctly, but, well, you're not setting it up correctly, but I think you're getting different answers. Big radius is 4, but it is squared, and then small radius. Yeah, because if you square it like this, then you actually have to foil it or create the middle term, which you don't really want. You really want 16 minus the next to the middle term. Okay. Did you get what you need? Yes.
Yeah, the only thing on these, like I really like these questions because I like how they just alter small things and it changes what you have to do. But I wish there was some way they just like had you draw the like, common graphs once at the top of the page and just like not have to redraw so something true. so similar. I'm so glad. Yeah. 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 It has to be the area that's trapped in all the things. So it's going to be a little slippery. Yeah, the area area here isn't really being trapped by this line. The area up here isn't being trapped by that line. So it's just it's just the stuff that's trapped. So Oh, yeah. 
Is it seven minus x squared? Four number nine. Number nine was the big radius is e plus x squared. Harrison, can you come here? Can you come here? Oh, because it's getting bigger. Yeah. It's getting bigger. Make a table. I wonder if seven minus x squared before. Wait. No. Oh, no. I just know that this part needs to be D. That's what it's for. I know this needs to be extra plus two. I'm not sure what this one needs to be added to. Like, that's your answer. This is a correct one. That's how I get A pi out of that. Nope. Uh, X plus two. So, that's how I get A Gotcha. Copy that. Do we have Roger? Roger? Yes. Thank Let me offer to work uh, another one on the board, but I know not everyone was to question eight earlier. So, did anyone have any of the questions one through five that you're still stuck on? Okay, six or seven that you're still stuck on? Okay, nine or ten? It is. And then is the smaller radius six minus four x minus x squared? Yes. Okay, I'm on that track. See, sometimes finding those radius lengths 
I told you that it'd be tough. Sometimes yeah. it's like it's right there, but it's hard to like, sometimes to what's a little bit like. Small radius. Small radius. Small radius. Small radius is six minus four x minus six. It's hard to visualize. Yeah, that's why like the bigger your picture is, so you can like see like what yeah. you're actually trying to measure helps a whole lot. For sure. And I always try to make the big pictures, but it still is very hard to see sometimes. I looked at it, but I didn't have time to look at it. Right. I know, we've been busy. Well, I knew something like that was going to happen based on when I talked to Margie last time, but it's like, why do you just wait? I don't know. I don't know why she's taking charge. You probably told her to. I think so. Probably the, the, because he's had us do that in the past. Put me on AB. Yeah, AB on me. I like AB on her. Yeah. She's mad. You know, but I mean, we kind of knew that was going to happen. But I don't know. I don't know. We're doing AB training this summer. I just don't know what their intentions are. If they're trying to get her out of it or, or what. I have no idea. No one told me anything. You having seven period planning every day is awesome. Yes. You having six and seven, they'll be, they'll be done early on those three days. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I have to have six because uh, part of my head. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good question. I wouldn't have answered this question. Yeah. Just that. Okay, let me, um, we got just a few minutes here. So don't forget to fill out the Google form about uh, the mock exam if you need to. I do want you to finish this. I have all of these worked out on the website, minus two. I guess they're the two that people don't normally ask about. But you're also welcome to drop in during advisory tomorrow if you need some more help beyond that. And then also before break, hand out 102 volumes from known cross sections. Uh, we did one full class period on that. And then the Thursday before break, after you did the one Khan Academy assignment, I gave you more time to work on that. So I would like those turned in. So I encourage you to turn those into Google Classroom, but you're also welcome to turn in hard copies at the start of class Thursday. So those would be the two things that I'm collecting up to this point. Do we need to do this on a Oh, the other handout you picked up, you can wait on it. Uh, there's a handout with three FRQs, and I will assign that at some point, so if you have a study hall or time to get started on it, you can. But those would be good examples of what to expect on your last test FRQ.